Friends, please stand. Cry later. <laughs> well, who did that? <laughs> Friends, good afternoon, and welcome to this wonderful celebration. I know that Ted and Becca are so grateful for your presence here with us today. Friends, we have been invited here to share with Ted and Becca a most important moment in their lives in the time they've been together, their love and understanding of each other has grown and matured, and now they've decided to live their lives together as husband and wife. So let us begin this celebration of marriage with prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our creator and redeemer, as you gladden the wedding at Cana in Galilee by the presence of your son, so by his presence now, bring your joy to this wedding. Look with favor upon Ted and Rebecca and grant that they, rejoicing in all your gifts, may at length celebrate with Christ the marriage feast which has no end. Amen. Friends, I invite you to be seated. And uh, Chelsea has our first reading today. The first reading comes from the letter to the Colossians. This passage is not just for the two of you, but is for all of us. It's a letter that was written to a community that was really struggling, was struggling to live out love. And so today we celebrate your love. We celebrate your love on the good days and on the days that are hard. We love you. Receive these words. As God's holy chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against each other, forgive. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive one another. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Here ends this day's reading. And Heather has our second reading today. I honestly cannot think of a better quote to describe Mr. Tedward and Miss Becca when they FaceTimed me to ask me if I would read this, I wasn't sure what I was getting into, but as soon as I saw it, I knew that it was completely apt for them. Uh, I'm not a wedding person myself, but I am so thrilled to be here, and I can't think of two people that I would rather celebrate this momentous day with. So this is for both of you. 
This quote is usually misdirected um, as Dr. Seuss, but it's actually by Robert Fulgham from the book True Love. We're all a little weird, and life is a little weird. And when we find someone whose weirdness is compatible with ours, we join up with them and fall into mutually satisfying weirdness and call it love, true love. And then the third reading for this afternoon is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus answered the Pharisees, he said, have you not read that when that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And that's going to end all of our readings tonight. Well, what a wonderful uh, and glorious day this is for all of us gathered here today to celebrate with Ted and Becca their wedding day. Uh, you know, normally when I get together with uh, couples to get ready for today, I normally have conversations with them about their hopes and their dreams for the future. We'll share funny stories about, um, you know, what they've done in their past. Uh, for example, I've known uh, Becca for over 18 years now. And so I have stories, lots of stories, to embarrass her. Um, I, could, I could tell stories of New Orleans. Uh, I could tell... <laughs> I could share uh, times when we've been together at beer festivals, uh, drinking together. Um, what, why don't I? I could. I almost passed out the one. <laughs> so that would make fun of me. Um, we could, make, we could make fun of them in so many different ways, um, particularly given how weird they are together. Uh, we could have a lot of laughs at their, at their expense. But the truth is that with what we have dealt with in 2020, with what they have dealt with in 2020, it places this celebration in the midst of just absolute insanity and so many challenges that Ted and Becca have had to get through to get to this place. Mm -hmm. Highs and lows, anguish and pandemic, and yet here we are, this couple in love bound together regardless of all that is swirling around us and them on this day. And it strikes me that most of the time when I'm standing up here with someone like Ted and Becca, young couple getting married, Things up to that point have gone usually fairly well for them. For those of us who lived some years and have lived some years married, we know that things are not always that easy. Um, but Ted and Becca, your relationship has already been through so much. In considering all of that as we gather this afternoon, it almost feels like, as Chelsea pointed out to us, these words that the Apostle Paul offers to Ted and Becca fit them and where we are so perfectly. When he says, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Forgive each other. Above all, clothe yourselves in love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I mean, maybe setting the meekness part aside. We got Becca after all. This certainly is the kind of love that we are here to celebrate. And the interesting thing, as Chelsea pointed out, is that these words are not just offered to two people who are getting married on a day like this. This is talking about how people in the world relate to one another. It's not about the kind of affection that one person has for another but rather he has in mind the kind of love that binds everything and all people together in ways that conflicts and heartaches and difficulties can never separate. And it's important because the world doesn't always operate in this way. When storm clouds come, as they inevitably do, people go into survival mode, as many of us have done this entire year. And sometimes we wind up taking care of ourselves just to kind of get through and relationship moves down the list of importance. But when Paul writes these words and he says, clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, 
and patience and forgive each other and above all, clothe yourselves in love. He's concerned with keeping people together, all of us together, binding relationships together in a perfect harmony that he calls us so that while all the cacophony of noises and problems around people can get loud and drown out the most important parts of life, Paul talks about love, a love that keeps us bound together. This love that we talk about is a love that we don't know all how to do ourselves, but Jesus has shown, to do, has shown us how to do it because he gave himself in humility, in compassion, in meekness, and most importantly, in love. Ted and Rebecca, this afternoon, the gift of that kind of love and loving each other that way is God's gift to you. And so my prayer is that every single day of your lives that you would clothe yourselves in God's love so that you have love today, tomorrow, and always. I think you can do it. I'll try. Go. <laughs> do. Amen. With that, then, I invite you, Ted, to step back over here as we bind the two of you together with your mutual vows. <laughs> Friends, the Lord God in his goodness created us and by the gift of marriage founded human community in a joy that begins now and is brought to perfection in the life to come. Because of sin, our age-old rebellion, sometimes the gladness of marriage feels overcast and the gift of family sometimes feels like a burden. But because God, who established marriage, continues still to bless it with his abundant and ever-present support, we are always sustained in our weariness so that our joy is always restored. Becca and Ted, if it is your intention to share your life with each other and all that the future may bring, with your vows, commit yourselves now to love each other as husband and wife. You ready? All right. So I, Ted, take you, Becca. I, Ted, take you, Becca. To be my wife. To be my wife. My partner, in life, my partner in life, and my one true love. And my one true love. With, God's mercy and help, With God's mercy and help, I will cherish our friendship and love you today, tomorrow, and forever. I will trust you and honor you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will, laugh with you and cry. <laughs> I will love you faithfully, will love you faithfully. through the best and the worst, through the difficult and the easy, through the difficult and the easy. Whatever, may come, whatever may come, I will always be by your side. As I have given you my hand to hold, so I give you my life to keep. So I give you my life to keep. Well, it's my turn. Time to go, girl. All right, I'll try. I, Becca, take you, Ted. I, Becca, take you, Ted. To be my husband. To be my husband. My partner in life. My partner in life. And my one true love. And my one true love. With God's mercy and help, with God's mercy and help, I will cherish our friendship. I will cherish our friendship and love you today, tomorrow, and love you today, tomorrow and forever. I will trust you and honor you. I will trust you and honor you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will love you faithfully. I will love you faithfully through the best and the worst. Through the best and the worst. Through the difficult and the easy. Through the difficult and the easy. Whatever may come. Whatever may come. I will always be by your side. As I have given you my hand to hold, what? Come on. As I have given you my hand to hold, so I give you my life to keep. So I give you my life to keep. I thought I knew it. Can you take that out? Thanks, buddy. Thanks a lot. Friends, wedding rings are reminders of the unbroken circle of a healthy and abiding love. Within the safety and comfort of true marriage, love freely given has no beginning and no end. Becca and Ted, if it is each of, your, each of you gives your lives to one another, and each of, I know, you're just leading me astray. It's the way it's always been. Each of you gives your love to the other, and each of you receives love from the other. And like the circles that are these rings, true love is unending. These rings represent Ted and Becca's never-ending and abiding love for one another. Becca and Ted, place these rings on one another's fingers and repeat after me. Becca, take this ring. Becca, take this ring. 
as a sign of my love, of my love. And, faithfulness to you. and faithfulness to you. Ted, take this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness to you. Go ahead. Amen. There you go. <laughs> For as much as Ted and Becca have consented to gather and have witnessed the same before God in this company, by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And so finally, let us pray for God's blessing on this couple, because Lord knows they need it. <laughs> May the Lord God, who created our first parents and established them in marriage, establish and sustain you, that you may find delight in each other and grow in holy love until your life's end. May you dwell in God's presence forever, and may true and constant love always preserve you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I get the honor to be the first one to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Ted and Becca Barron. You may seal your promises with a kiss. Ooh.